What National Geographic and Lindblad have in common, and what makes them just such great partners, is the fact that I think that they have a, a common vision and a common mission, which is to explore the world and inspire people to just be better stewards of the planet. We're on an expedition to Antarctica, the great white continent at the bottom of the Earth. Each summer, the ice releases its grip on the continent and hardy expedition ships are able to make the voyage south. Welcome to Antarctica. Thank you. Everything we expected and more. Glaciers and icebergs and mountains. There's absolutely no place that I've ever been that matches Antarctica. I've been coming to Antarctica for 15 years. I still can't quite put it into words why I fell in love with this great white continent, but it is one of the most amazing places on the planet. Every voyage to the Antarctic is different. We have complete flexibility to explore based on the weather and the ice. We have our zodiacs which allow us to land wherever we choose. We are currently exploring the Weddell Sea and we are on Devil's Island. How do you articulate a place this beautiful? It is pretty much beyond words. I saw my first baby penguin and amongst thousands of other penguins. I feel very blessed to be able to travel to such a remote location. There really couldn't be much more that could top the stay or make it much better than it has been so far. Where in the world should our next adventure be? If I could take my family anywhere in the world, I would take them to Antarctica. It's vast. It's clear air. It's ice. It's the sound of so much wildlife that you can't even imagine. Over five million square miles larger than Europe and largely untouched by humanity. How can you describe this to anybody? They have to see it. You cannot tell a person what Antarctica is like. You cannot show them a picture and have them understand it. It's just a very special place. Well, we passed the Drake Passage and start, started going through the South Shetland Islands and we've gotten to an area that's close to the peninsula and we're starting to see some gorgeous tabular icebergs here. The famous blue ice can be visibly seen here. There are horizontal lineations on its side, so those are the annual layers of snow that build up on top of this ice when the iceberg is still part of an ice shelf. Now that it's broken off, it has the, the vertical fractures that were in the ice shelf that have created the vertical sides of this um, large tabular iceberg. This one also has uh, some caves in it, and the, the caves and arches that are in the icebergs are caused by the wave action, the waves just slapping up next to it and breaking off pieces. The seawater is below freezing, below the freezing point of fresh water, which is what the iceberg is. And so the iceberg is sitting in water it's colder than basically the iceberg, and the iceberg can't melt. It's gorgeous, the different colors, the different patterns, shapes. Wow, it's really it's quite spectacular. Happy to be out here cold, looking at it so close. What are we, about 60, 70 yards away? Incredible.
We made it. We are here on Barrientos Island in the Ato Island chain. This is our first stop and everybody is so excited looking at the chinstrap penguins and the gentoo penguins. Many of them have chicks now. So when you see them stand up with their backs against the blowing snow and the wind, you'll see these fuzzy little gray chicks. Some of them less than a week old and some that have been here for now maybe three weeks, especially those chinstrap chicks. They're getting really big. My first impression is the smells, the smells of nature, with this, with these thousands of magnificent penguins, being what they are. This is fantastic. It's a dream come true. I, I'm emotional about seeing all of this and uh, just nature in its finest. It's just beautiful. So this morning the National Geographic Explorer has made a continental landing at Brown Bluff, a beautiful spot on the northern end of the Antarctic Peninsula. We have an incredibly calm Antarctic sound, number of icebergs in the water, and penguin chicks that are just thriving. These Adelie penguin chicks um, have been born, some of them, a week ago. They'll be with their parents for 22 days in this guard stage and then those parents will go out to sea. The chicks will huddle together in a crush, doing the safety in numbers thing. And then about 45 days of age, these chicks will fledge. Well, I believe we're on the Antarctic Peninsula and we are seeing the Adelie penguins. Looks like thousands of them out here and they have just uh, recently hatched. There aren't many places left like this in the world and to be here is a really rare and unique opportunity. We should remember that we should protect and keep these places the way they are. Uh, I've spent about four decades on the ocean now studying uh, marine mammals, various species, and uh, to me, killer whale is uh, the most fascinating uh, whale or dolphin out there. Everything they do is, is coordinated in their life. They cooperate with the, their feeding, and they catch something, they share it among each other, so they're almost like a single organism. They're, they're so in tune with each other. We've been putting satellite tags on these animals and the tag is placed onto the dorsal fin uh, laterally, a flush to the dorsal fin just like this. And we're hoping that the tagged animal will keep the tag for three or four months and perhaps give us some insight into if they migrate, as we know some of them do, where they go and for how long. Killer whales are very interesting predators. Um, they're top level predators, they're intelligent, and they kill for a living. But what we saw more of was the killer whales were chasing the penguins, batting them around, playing with them, uh, and letting them go, then going and chasing them again. It was sort of a, a cat and mouse type situation. They kill when they're not necessarily hungry. They kill things that they, that they don't eat, and that's what we were seeing. It's, it reminds me of, of domestic cats. Um, they will often play with mice uh, for a very long period of time without killing them. They'll disable them, then they'll let them go. Just as the mouse was, is trying to get away, they'll, they'll pounce on them again. It's what predators do. Oh. 
Well, it's feeding time here in the Southern Ocean, and this is a dual event, human and uh, marine mammal. Uh, the orcas are feeding on penguins, whereas our guests are dining on hors d'oeuvres. Thank you very much. <laughs> Not the tropics, huh? No, it is not. Uh, this isn't penguin, is it? Uh, I, I'm allergic. No, it's not. It's seal. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Cheers. Bill. Bill. Mm. <laughs>